Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to be talking about Confederates in Psychological Experiments. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about Confederates in Psychological Experiments. A confederate is a person who acts like they are a participant in an experiment, but it's just acting. In reality, the confederate works for the researcher and has been carefully trained to say and do certain things for that experiment. Sometimes they are student researchers, and sometimes they are actually trained actors who have been brought in to the experiment to play this specific part. They're basically the minions for real life scientists. But whoever plays the part, the confederate is critical to the experiment. Remember, psychologists all follow an ethical code and would never lie or purposefully deceive their participants without it being crucial to the experiment or without disclosing it at the end of the experiment. There are some situations, especially in certain research areas, where having a confederate there to guide the experiment might be the majority of the experiment. For instance, in the classic ash conformity experiment, participants lined up and were asked to tell which of these two marks on a screen were longer. However, only the participant at the very end of the line was the real participant. The rest of people in line were all confederates. The main point of the study was to see if individuals would go along with the consensus of the group when the group was answering with an obviously wrong answer. Without confederates there actively providing that wrong answer, the experiment simply couldn't have been done. And in big areas of study, like lying, conformity, and groupthink, confederates are often used because there just simply isn't another way to do that experiment. In psychology experiments, much like in the 2010 hit movie Despicable Me, the lesson is that things aren't always what they seem. <laughs> it's important to note here that the experiments which use confederates have to pass the same ethical review process from a committee as all other experiments. That means that the participants will ultimately be told at the end of the experiment if there was a confederate involved. But even if there may be outside approval on the ethicality of the experiment, there are other reasons researchers might not want to use confederates in experiments. A 2012 article goes over some of the big positives and negatives when it comes to using confederates. And one of the main problems is that confederates often have a lot of information about the study. If they are a researcher, they may even know the ultimate goals and expected behavior from the participant. That means it can be difficult for it to be clear if the response that you're getting from the participant is truly their own or if there are cues from the confederate that might be impacting the experiment. Another huge problem is maintaining consistency. Confederates often have to follow scripts in order to make sure that from participant to participant, things remain consistent. A lot of people have experience talking to others following scripts when they get calls from telemarketers, and it can be uncomfortable and seem really fake, particularly if you're their 30th or 40th call of the day. There's a reason no one wants to talk to telemarketers. Scripted answers make people uneasy and they don't want to engage. The same goes for scripts from Confederates. Once the Confederate has been through several different participants, the process seems to be more forced and uncomfortable for the participant, much like watching minion movies. So, for a researcher, dealing with confederates and experiments can have significant drawbacks, but it might be the only way to complete their study. For participants, it might mean interacting awkwardly with a confederate, but you do have the security of knowing that the use of the confederate in the experiment has been reviewed for ethical concerns and that you'll be debriefed at the end of the experiment. If you want to know more about psychological experiments, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!
If you don't have a toddler and you haven't seen the Minion Solo movie, congratulations! I'm never gonna get that time back.